Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about Jonathan Edwards' sermon, uh, his eighth sermon in his book, Charity and Its Fruits. Uh, this eighth sermon is about anger. Uh, charity is contrary to an angry spirit. It is based on uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 5, uh, is not easily provoked. And so uh, the main idea in this sermon, or one of the main ideas we want to talk about, is the way that the Lord wants us to have our minds and our hearts mainly interested in loving Him, fill our days with uh, fulfilling uh, his desire that we love him and that we love others. Okay, so so how does anger fit into this? Well, anger is one of those things that we all, uh, many of us, uh, struggle with, rather. And uh, it's one of those things that we fall into. And uh, one of the things that Edward wants to say from the beginning is that not all angry anger is sin. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us to be angry and sin not, so it's, it's feasible uh, that we could uh, be angry in a way that's not sinful. Uh, and then he speaks of ways, Edward speaks of ways, that we uh, find ourselves uh, moving into sinful directions uh, with our anger. Sometimes we're angry when we're, uh, we are more angry than we should be, or angry in situations in which anger isn't appropriate. And specifically, when we move anger into the area of, I want ill will, I want bad things to happen to you, or perhaps I want to get revenge against you. And so uh, there's many helpful ways that he helps reflect on that, uh, just about being over overly angry. Sometimes we get really angry about a small thing, or we get angry about something that perhaps you a person could potentially be reasonably angry for a short period of time and still weeks and months later, we're still angry about it. And so there's ways that we abuse anger. And so uh, what Edwards wants to say though, is not just sometimes our anger is wrong, uh, which it is, there is a sinful way to be angry, but also to remember that God has something positive for us to do with our life, uh, that is to love. And that's why we're putting charity uh, over against uh, uh, anger. Uh, spend your days loving uh, loving God, loving others instead of uh, being angry. Now, uh, one of the uh, ways that he talks about, kind of helpfully, about how we do anger wrong is that we are angry uh, with sometimes just our circumstances. We're angry uh, with that person got a raise instead of us, or that person got the promotion instead of us, or or uh, something just didn't go right in our in our uh, world, or the way not the way that we wanted it to, and so we're angry. And Edwards wants to say, well, sometimes uh, you need to reflect on the fact that perhaps you're angry at God. Uh, you you are questioning that God did uh, right uh, when He uh, arranged the situations in your life in the which in which the way they are, and so uh, we need to be careful that we are not questioning God's wise and sovereign rule in this world. Uh, and and sometimes we can trace back our own anger to uh, just anger about things not going the way we want it. One of the uh, very helpful things that Edward says in this sermon is that uh, sometimes we find that we're angry because we're more interested in our own interest uh, than in God's. Uh, we are more interested in our uh, honor being preserved than we are God. And, and one of the things that he wants to say at this point is that honestly, um, uh, the grounds of being angry really are when sin exists. Uh, if there's no sin, uh, then there's no good and, and solid ground for being angry. So we must find that there is sin, and sin is the reason why you're angry in a particular situation. And then secondly, in any situation in which sin has occurred, uh, even if it is a sin in which someone has sinned against you, someone has offended you, uh, that person, when they have sinned against you, has both sinned against you and against God. Uh, so when they lie to you, uh, they, they, they offend you, and yet they break God's command about lying. And because God's honor is greater, because his glory is greater, uh, the greater offense is against God than against us. And so, so many times we get caught up in anger because the only reason we're angry is uh, because of the offense against us. How dare you lie to me? Uh, we might say. And so really, we're, we're not really trying to defend God's honor in some sort of uh, righteous uh, defending of the honor of God in which someone dared to tell a lie against a holy God. That, that is, that's way back in the background. It's, it's uh, you lied to me and, uh, and now I'm angry and you'll have, to, you'll have to deal with the consequences of offending me. And, uh, and this is where uh, Edwards, I think, is helpful. He says, look, if we had the mind, uh, which is the mind that God wants us to have, uh, which is to have God and his interest have first place in our life, uh, we will be helped than to uh, push away anger and put, a, put away anger because we are mostly interested in God's um, 
honor and glory in our life. And now what this does is it doesn't fill our days with anger, I don't believe. Obviously there are times when, in which righteous anger is appropriate, but it recognizes uh, that if we read God's word, his clear word to us is to spend our days uh, with loving, uh, loving God, and loving others. And so may we spend our days instead of being angry at that person at that sin or that offense against you, rather spend your day, spend your hours of the day uh, loving God and loving others. Uh, think about the damage that has been done. Just think about the damage that has been done perhaps in your own family or in your church or in your community or somewhere else where we have people whose days are filled with anger and revenge and ill will toward others, and I have a right to be mad at them, uh, and their days are filled with that, and think about what kind of a community that that creates. And then imagine that we would just take those people out of that community and put in those community uh, people whose minds were filled not with anger and thoughts of revenge, but whose minds were filled with loving God and being and loving other people. And, and uh, the idea isn't that we need to take this person out and put this one into the community, but perhaps you need to be the person who isn't the angry person in that community, but you are the loving person in that community. And if we do that, uh, then we will see uh, how uh, we would be a blessing, a greater blessing in our own community, uh, how we will be a blessing in all of our relationships. Uh, and uh, this is a difficult thing. We need God's help. So may we pray that God would help us to be those who are uh, angry uh, only as appropriate and really honestly less characterized by anger and more characterized by love. Uh, may God help us uh, to be such people.